you for tuning in. So if you've been pl- paying for health insurance, or maybe your, your employer has been paying for health insurance all of your life, as in my case, and you've never really needed to use it, uh, as in my case, until recently, as in my case, <laughs> and you're 61 years old, as in my case, I, I saw my bill the other day. I've, I've had this thing with my leg, and I won't bore you with the details, but bottom line is every time I go to the doctor for this, it's a vein procedure they're doing to help fix my leg, and they're wonderful. Gosh, I, I'm so glad that they have this technology, so don't think for one second think I'm complaining about anything. But I'm just uh, in, it's interesting, the money part of this, mm-hmm. because uh, the insurance covers, oh, my gosh, Thank God for insurance, right? Yeah. But I looked at the actual amount of money. It was like $3,000 every time I went, and I was paying a $25 copay. Now, how good is that, huh? Mm-hmm. That's really good. But when you think about how much you've paid in insurance since you were first started working, <laughs> it, it does kind of balance out, I guess, all these years where I never benefited from the insurance at all, right? Right. Now I get a you know three or four visits that are $3,000 a piece. And some of you, I've heard from you, you've had a quarter million, a half million, a million dollars worth of expenses mm-hmm. uh, paid on your behalf by your insurance companies. Josh Putter is on the phone. He's a senior healthcare executive. He's going to tell us how to navigate our hospital bills, patient charges versus what the hospital actually gets paid. This sounds fascinating to me, having looked at those numbers. Uh, Josh, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm all right. Where are you calling from? I am in Bradenton, Florida, so just south of Tampa. All right, all right. And when we look at how much uh, is on the bill um, and, and how much got paid by the insurance company, does that not all go to the hospital? No, it doesn't. It's uh, it's a very complex system of charges versus reimbursement. But depending on who you're, whether you have Medicare insurance or regular insurance, or you have no insurance, the hospital gets reimbursed differently by each of those payers. And the charges on your bill really are more um, to help the hospital either track their uh, inventory or help them with. Uh, Productivity, and in your opinion, is it is it uh, is it inflated? In other words, it, it's the high cost of, of health to uh, partially because of those other expenses. That's part of it. Um, part of the high cost of health is just medical inflation continues to go up, mostly because people like yourself aren't paying the bill. Insurance companies are. So when the uh, uh, hospitals negotiate contracts with insurance companies, they know that the insurance companies have raised premiums and mm-hmm. they're trying to get it that. So that's part of the medical inflation. Okay. But your bill doesn't really represent exactly what the hospital is getting reimbursed. Uh, for example, if you're getting like a total knee replacement or a total hip at a hospital, you're a Medicare aid patient, you, the hospital is getting a fixed amount for that procedure. So regardless of how much time you spend in, in general, the hospital will get paid uh, X amount of dollars from Medicare, and the Medicare eligible patient usually has to pay a deductible for inpatient care. And the charges are really irrelevant when it comes to a Medicare patient on an inpatient basis. Do, do we use this information in any way? I mean, uh, how, how do we, as, as the patient, how do we use the information you're telling us about? So I think part of the way you use the information, uh, say in your case, when you have commercial insurance, um, a lot, even though you had a $25 uh, copay, a lot of times people are having to pay what they call either, uh, you know, well, part of the copay could be a percentage of the charges. So one of the reasons hospitals have higher charges, and this is sort of historical, if a patient comes in for outpatient, they will, 20% of that bill they have to pay. So historically, as hospitals are looking to, um, uh, quite frankly, make a little bit more money Mm -hmm. on the outpatient side, they will raise their charges, and they don't do it individually by each uh, line item. They'll just do a broad percentage across the base uh, uh, increase. And that's why things tend to get so inflated over time, like a lot of people will see an aspirin or a Tylenol for, you know, $50. Yeah. That's not a line on a basis. 
So are so, you say, are are you saying um, essentially that if a person goes to the hospital and they don't have insurance, that their bill is going since they have to pay out of pocket, that bill will not be as high as if you had insurance. Well, no, actually, it's the other way around. Unfortunately, and this is where people that don't have insurance really need to look at their hospital bill. So if you don't have insurance and you come into the hospital and have a procedure, that's when scrutinizing your bill becomes much more important because you don't have a contract with the hospital for a certain amount of, uh, or a contracted rate. So that's when you need to really, one, scrutinize your bill and make sure that everything on the bill is appropriate. Oh, because there's okay. so, yes, there's so many things. So, for example, when the nurse has so many patients to take care of and they have so many items that they are responsible for not only administering but also making sure the charges get on the chart, sometimes things do get mixed up. So it's extremely important that as someone who has no insurance that they, one, they go over their bill. And two, the charges that are on, that you have are always negotiable. As I tell everyone, everything's negotiable, but especially in healthcare, if you don't have insurance, don't be so um, intimidated by the charges on the bill that you don't call up the hospital and try and get a discount off of your bills. And oh, then really? Even, oh, 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 absolutely, and almost always they will, because one, the hospital really doesn't want to um, stick it to people that don't have insurance. These are usually people that are at our lower socioeconomic level and don't have uh, access to health care. Mm-hmm. So they really don't want to hurt anyone. They want to get paid for their services, and they, they're more than willing to work with people that don't have insurance. Now, usually you start with the business office personnel. If for some reason that doesn't uh, work to your satisfaction, keep moving up the line to the CFO or the CEO of the hospital, and they will definitely work with you. I always work with people that don't have insurance at all. If you if you have a, an elective procedure that uh, insurance does not cover, do does the bill look different than if there? In other words, they know from the very beginning. Not only is there no insurance, but this guy or, or lady has has agreed to pay for this themselves because it's elective. Does that bill look? Right. Di- does that bill look different? The bill doesn't look different, but usually when you have an elective procedure that's outpatient, you negotiate a rate at the beginning. And um, and they say that because, let's go ahead, it's very similar. Hospitals are very attuned to contracting with different payers. Like I said, whether it's the government, whether it's the state with Medicaid, uh, there's not a lot of negotiation with you know Medicare, Medicaid, but also commercial insurers. So they know they'd much rather get, and there's a lot of competition out there. So they'd rather get the business at a reasonable rate and um, get your business. The bill is still the same. Your bill will look the same no matter what kind of insurance you have. Mm -hmm. The hospital doesn't discriminate against that. Um, And there's a lot of reasons for that, which goes back into long-time history of Medicare and what they call their uh, cost-to-charge ratio. So a lot in the past, hospitals will get paid based on what they call their costs, but their costs were calculated based on charges. So a lot of times hospitals would increase charges to try and reflect their increased costs. Okay. Um, that's very technical, <laughs> but... Yeah, but it sounds confusing. Is, okay, is, f- I want to make sure the listeners can benefit from this information. Is there a website you can direct them to? You know what? The, I would go to... I would start with the... Uh, H, I think it's hhs.gov or uh, that's the uh, government website or you can go to the CMS website, which is another given at website for Medicare patients. Um, I would start there. That's, that's where I would start. Or you could just Google hospital bill. And there's a lot of resources when it comes to your hospital bill. All right. But just don't get so intimidated by the cost of it because those charges are the same for everybody. There's only one what we call charge master. And it's just too complicated to try it for hospitals. At least they don't have the technology yet. They there's a lot more uh, technological innovation on the clinical side than the billing side. So all the bills are the same. But when it's coming out of your pocket, especially on your copay, right. definitely look at the bills because it's just so massive, the number of things that you get charged for on a daily basis. There's always mistakes made. Not really? on purpose. Really? But, oh, absolutely. absolutely. So, and, and, you can get charged. Yeah. So you're, you're, st- you're mm-hmm. telling us don't... don't f- fear challenging something if it looks funny or you have a question about it go ahead and bring it up 
Absolutely. And actually, the hospital wants to resolve your issues. At least I would hope so. Yeah, right. Because you don't want that reputation out of your community that you can give great care, but you get, you know, they stick it to you at the end. Yeah. yeah, Um, yeah. It's very important that you... uh, you communicate with them okay absolutely uh josh thank you for the great information i think a lot of our listeners will benefit from what you have just said and um and uh, d- definitely come back anytime that was a very useful conversation we had and if you have any questions about health care i'll be glad to come back on your show i enjoy helping people i'm, I'm obviously i'm not a clinician i'm not a doctor but i've been doing this a long time and seeing a lot of changes and there'll be more changes all right well a- uh, absolutely especially with obamacare and everything else so. Absolutely. We would love to have you on again. Um, and, and thank you for being on the air with us. We have a, a break we need to take. We'll take that break and be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Sunshine will mix with clouds today. We'll have a couple of spots. Seeing a thunderstorm this afternoon, a high of 87 to 91. Thunder showers will die out this evening. Then partly cloudy tonight, look 73 to 75. Another thunderstorm or two mainly in the afternoon tomorrow and Sunday. Otherwise, sunny to partly cloudy. Highs 88 to 92 both days. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Maggie Johnson. Yeah, blame that drip coming down from the corner of the room. But where did I come from? I'll never tell. Bone Dry Roofing can and will fix it right the first time using quality materials and will deal honestly and fairly with you, period. You can find Bone Dry Roofing on their website, BoneDryRoofingLLC.com and Facebook at Bone Dry Roofing LLC. Do it right before your roof needs a tarp to keep the elements out. Bone Dry Roofing stands behind their work to help make your home safe and secure.